I've historically poked fun at Tarantino fans quite a bit on this channel. Uh, Karen, can you roll the clip? Walk into any film school and ask the nearest dude what the best films of all time are, and he's probably gonna go, Duh. Pulp Fiction? Despite all that though, I want to emphasize that I do like Tarantino's work. In fact, I don't think the man has ever truly put out a bad film. Not only is he very consistent, but each film is incredibly unique and original compared to the next. That is with the exception of the two Kill Bills, but according to Tarantino, there's supposedly one movie, but uh, anyways. He somehow created a style that literally can't be replicated, or at least done right. There are a lot of great films that clearly draw influence from him in spurts, and that's totally fine, but there are a lot of shitty film students that try to make Tarantino films, and they just don't work, and they don't go anywhere, and they suck. The only person that can do this style well is the man himself, and it's clear he has a lot of fun doing so. Point is, say what you want about the guy, I sure as hell don't love him as a person either, he's totally horny in like all his films, but he does kind of deserve the title of being one of the most influential and successful filmmakers of all time. I've never made a Tarantino video because I felt like everything that needed to be said had already been said. But with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood hitting theaters, I figured what better time to make this video than now? Well, I mean, one could argue a better time would be in a few years when his next slash last film comes out and we have a definitive list of every film he'll ever make, but ah, fuck it, we need content right now. Like I said earlier, everything to be said has already been said, so I decided to go a more personal route and do a ranking that maybe like 10% of you care about? A ranking that if you disagree with it, you're wrong. I'm kidding, it's a joke. Hey, hey guys, it's a joke. So without any further ado, here's my worst to best list of Tarantino films. Like I said, the guy has never made a bad film. The Hateful Eight is certainly not a bad film. In fact, the first time I saw it, I was completely invested as I am with all of Tarantino's work. But that's the thing, Tarantino is really good at making you feel into the movie as it's happening. It's how that film ages that really says how you feel about it. And The Hateful Eight is just naturally the most forgettable film of his for me. I owe a lot of this to what I feel is simultaneously the most unique part about the film, which is the location. The entire thing happens in what, two locations, maybe three? In the moment, thanks to some really good dialogue and great performances, he's able to keep you invested, but I I can only remember like three scenes out of this three hour film. The whole experience because of that location just kind of blends in together. Samuel Jackson and Jennifer Jason Lee are obviously fantastic, but that's really all I have to say about it. Whoa, okay, everybody, hey, everybody calm down. Kill Bill Volume 2 just isn't my thing compared to the rest of Tarantino's work. It's got some great scenes with great tension, but it really feels kind of messy to me. When a film like this is as slow as it is and moves around the way it does, it just makes me feel kind of disoriented. Whereas something like Pulp Fiction does so in a really smooth way and keeps me invested with each scene. But don't get me wrong, it's a bit less forgettable than Hateful Eight. It has some really fun action scenes, and at the end of the day, it's Kill Bill. Of course it feels essential. I just think this isn't really a film that I think about as much as his others, and it did close to to nothing for me. I actually really like Jackie Brown. When I'm into a crime thriller type of film like this, I'm into it, and let me tell you, I was into Jackie Brown. I like pretty much all the performances in this thing, especially Samuel Jackson and Pam Greer, but it's a pretty standard Tarantino film, and that's where my issues land. At least to me, Jackie Brown has always felt like he was doing very little compared to the rest of his films. If you were to take it out of his career, would we look at his body of work any differently? Eh, sure, it adds a little bit of old school crime to his palette, and I'd say it's still essential, but I feel like we don't really see him play around with any new tricks or evolve that much as a director through this. Whereas with every other film Tarantino feels like he has somewhat of a challenge to make the film work, this one felt like he could have done it on autopilot. Get it? Because a uh, pilot, she's a flight she's a flight attendant, you know? It also just doesn't feel like it has the replay value of a lot of these other films, which is an aspect of Tarantino's work I'll be touching on a lot. If you're gonna make these big types of movies that should be watchable and respected for years, there needs to be a really interesting and unique story with really unique characters. And of course Jackie Brown has that, but compared to his other films, it's just not on the same level. Anyway, still a great movie, I'll watch it, but... Mm. This is where things get tricky, because everything from here on out I do really love. Django Unchained is fucking great. Here's the thing, when people ask me what's a badass film, I give them two answers. I say one, Dougal, and two, Django Unchained. I think a lot of the talent that shines through in this film comes from the fact that Tarantino was able to make a story like this so fun. It's got some of my favorite scenes to come out of his filmography, and easily is the best use of blood out of any of his other films. But that's just my opinion. Not to mention Jamie Foxx, Christoph Waltz, Leonardo, the list goes on. The performances have a great balance of being being cold and, as I said, badass, but also have a good amount of heart as well. So you might be asking, what are the issues? Mm, it, it does feel like it runs a bit longer than it should and deals with some major pacing issues where certain scenes bring the rhythm of the film to a grinding halt, but besides that, this thing is pretty great in my opinion. Putting this one this low might be the hottest take on here. Listen, I love Inglorious Bastards a ton, and I will never forget the first time I saw it. It easily has some of Tarantino's funniest, most memorable, and most anxiety-inducing scenes. There's something about this film that runs so smoothly from start to finish. Most Tarantino films always feel like they get a little too wrapped up in 
well, being a Tarantino film, if that makes sense. And this one feels like Tarantino going in, cutting out all the meat, and just doing a good ass job at what he does. The dialogue is amazing, Brad Pitt, you know, probably his best performance ever, and that final scene, how could you not love this film? If you're wondering why it's not higher on this list, it really just comes down to personal preference, nothing the actual film did wrong. If I'm being honest with myself, I'd pop in any of the films that come after this before I consider revisiting Inglorious Bastards. It's fun, and it's great, yes, of course, but at the end of the day, it's just a little too heavy for my taste. Yeah, here it is, I guess. I kind of love this, sort of. I was really excited for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, don't get me wrong, but I was also sort of prepared to come out hating it based on what I was hearing. Well, yes, there are tons of flaws I could point out. In fact, this is maybe the most flawed Tarantino film there is. It just felt too fun and entertaining for me to care. I really could rip this thing apart for days, but if I'm gonna be completely honest with myself, I had a lot of fun watching it, and I saw it twice in one week. What does that say? I'm a sucker for some good jokes, and this is probably Tarantino's funniest movie out there. Brad Pitt and Leo are probably Priceless, Brad Pitt shirtless is just, uh, something else. It really just feels like a weird world and a group of people that I could watch for days. I mean, if there's an extended director's cut, I will watch it ASAP. While it does feel a little toned down in terms of action compared to Tarantino's other work, it just still feels really fascinating to me from beginning to end. But hey, well, let's calm down for a second. As I said, there are tons of flaws, and it's no masterpiece by any means. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, while an absolute blast, definitely feels like it lacks a point. I might be missing something, but that's just how I feel. Also, Margot Robbie is Sharon Tate. I mean, come on. These next four were legitimately impossible to rearrange from and pick between, but here we go, I guess. Kill Bill Volume 1 is just an absolute blast. There's really no argument against that. Every action scene in this thing is one of my favorite action scenes ever. You know me, I love bright colors, so the rest of this point is pretty much self-explanatory. This movie just looks fantastic. It's probably the best looking Tarantino film, if we're being honest. The wife's outfit, iconic. The cinematography, iconic. The whole damn thing, iconic. I have nothing but love for this movie, and all I can really do to talk about it is just say, go check it out. Sure, it doesn't stick the landing entirely, but you get the point, it's pretty much perfect. Yeah, uh, Death Proof is literally this high on the list. I don't know if it's because Tarantino labeled this as his worst movie, but I don't know why people call this his worst movie. Death Proof feels like it's easily the least quote-unquote epic Tarantino film, but it might be his funnest. It's very simple and to the point, which is something I love to see him do for once. It just feels like a new side of Tarantino that I haven't seen before. As much as Once Upon a Time in Hollywood feels like an ultimate tribute to cinema, this feels like it does so a bit better. It feels much more honest and authentic, and it does a much better job at getting that tribute across in both its style and structure. The ending is unbelievable, I'll say nothing more. And the music, like most of his films, but especially with this one, is great. Seriously, I don't know why people sleep on this thing so much. Please go watch it, although I will say this is him at his horniest. Ugh, I really don't want to talk about Pulp Fiction right now, but here we go. It's Pulp Fiction. L literally, what am I supposed to say? It's great. Yeah, iconic scenes. You get it. Great performances. Awesome dialogue. Classic. Whatever. I guarantee there isn't jack shit I can say about it that hasn't already been said a million times. It's amazing. Okay, go watch a different video essay on it if you want to hear something significant. I love it. Can we move on? So yeah, Reservoir Dogs is probably my favorite Tarantino film. As small scaled as it is compared to all of his other films, both in production value and in story, Reservoir Dogs remains the most exciting of his films to watch. Not only is it still fascinating to watch the birth of the style of filmmaking happen right before your eyes, but it feels a lot more down to earth than any of his other work. As violent as it is, I feel like I know each of these characters really well, and I feel connected and invested in their paths throughout this entire duration. It has a shit ton of heart, and I don't think enough people realize that. It really is Tarantino at his humblest, and Tarantino trying his absolute hardest to turn this simple story into the most exciting thing possible through film, and he definitely succeeded. I guess I just have a soft spot for this one, being that it's one of the first films that got me into filmmaking in general, but still looking back at it, it's so freaking good. I love simplicity, I love good violence, I love good music choices, good cinematography, good performances, good writing, good pacing, and a fun time, and that's exactly what this film delivers. So... All right, I did it. I, ma I made a Tarantino video. To all my film bros, I hope you're happy. I hope you got something out of this. But I'm curious, what's your ranking? Drop it in the comments. I will maybe read it, but I uh, probably won't actually. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications, I guess. And until next time...